Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another episode of Civilization 6 Tips, where today we are going to be taking a look at the Harbor District. So the Harbor District in Civilization 6 is unlocked with the Celestial Navigation technology. All you have to do to get to Celestial Navigation is first research sailing and astrology, and then to get the Eureka for Celestial Navigation, all you have to do is improve to sea resources. I do find that in not that many games, I will, uh, improve two sea resources before I research Celestial Navigation, simply because of the fact that I, I'm not someone that personally settles on the coast very often, so being able to improve two sea resources is, uh, you know, something that doesn't just happen very often for me, because a lot of the times I would much rather improve land resources. That's kind of just a personal preference thing, though, so it is still very easy to boost Celestial Navigation should you so desire. Um, in order to build the Harbor District, you obviously have to have some coast tiles to put it on, so it must be placed on a coast tile, and there can't be a, a luxury resource that is on the, the tile that you're trying to put it on, which, of course, I don't have any sea luxury resources here, but, um, you know, it, you obviously can't plop it down on a luxury resource, just like with all of the other districts in the game. Um, the Harbor District has a base cost of 54 production, much like all the other districts in the game, and that production will scale as you progress and as you build more districts and as you research more techs and things of that sort. Um, one other thing is that the Harbor does also remove the movement penalty for embarking and disembarking to and from the tile that it's built on. So normally if I were to, say, take my builder and have him embark here, it would cost movement to embark, but um, if you have the harbor, it costs significantly less. I can't remember if it costs significantly less movement to embark or no movement at all to embark. But either way, there is that um, the, the removal of the embarking penalty. As far as adjacency bonuses for the Harbor District are concerned, um, it will get plus one gold from every two adjacent districts, just like every other uh, district in the game. It will also get the full one gold from an adjacent government plaza tile. It will get one gold from every adjacent coastal resource tile, and two gold from each adjacent city center. Obviously, you can only really be adjacent to one city center, though, so really you can only get two gold from an adjacent city center. Um, wow, that sounded like super snarky, but <laughs> I didn't intend it to, but it did. Um, and you also will get plus one Great Admiral point per turn with your Harbor District. So I do find that adjacency bonuses on Harbor Districts are a little bit more difficult to come by than they are on other districts, um, just because of the fact that sea resources of often don't come in like big clumps where they will surround a tile. Normally you can have like two of them next to each other. Um, so the main bulk of the adjacency bonus I find that I normally get for harbors is from having them either adjacent to other districts or adjacent to city centers. And if I had to say, I would say that if you're going to use harbors for gold, I would definitely go for putting them or like aim to put them next to your city centers to get that gold. Unless you see a particularly good spot, which let's see if we have one here. Now, it doesn't look like we really have a really good spot that we have a lot of clumped up sea resources, but, um, so for the most part, I would aim to try to get your gold adjacency from the harbor from just having it either adjacent to more districts or adjacent to a city center. Um, as far as the citizen yields for the harbor district are concerned, we will, uh, each citizen in the harbor will provide plus two gold and plus one science. This isn't an outstanding citizen yield, and most of the time I really wouldn't bother putting citizens in uh, in districts. And for those of you who don't know, just because I know as I've done these tips videos, a lot of people don't know what you can do with the districts. And let's see, we have a district down here. So with any district, you can go and manage citizens, and if you have a building that has been constructed in the district, you can assign a citizen to the district, and it will pr uh, produce the yields um, that are exclusive to that district. So if we put a citizen to work the harbor, uh, each citizen that we have there would provide plus two gold and plus one science. So that's what citizen yields are for those of you who don't know. Let's go ahead, though, and talk about the buildings for the harbor district. The tier one building for the harbor district is the lighthouse, and it is also unlocked with celestial navigation right alongside the harbor. And I think that the lighthouse is actually a very strong building, and uh, we'll talk about why right here. So for one, you get plus 25% combat experience for all naval units trained in this city. That's not, I don't think that's particularly great. I mean, I guess if you're going for a naval domination game, that is very good, but otherwise that's not too useful. But um, one of the real good things about it is that it will provide plus one food on all coast tiles in the city. So... Right here, if you see, we have all of these coast tiles. Maybe if we had settled closer to the coast, we would have quite a few coast tiles that are uh, in ownership of the city. And getting one food on every single one of those tiles can add up to be a lot of uh, food bonus. Let's also bring back up the lighthouse here. Um, so I think that the, the extra food is very good. It makes uh, coastal settling a lot more viable than it otherwise would. So if you are going to settle directly on the coast, I would definitely recommend getting a lighthouse in the city. 
Also, I don't know why that popped up. Um, additionally, though, you <laughs> why does it pop up over there? Okay, I'm just losing it. Uh, additionally, though, you get plus one trade route capacity if the city does not yet have a market, and that is just more reason to build Lighthouse because trade routes are very strong in Civ, and having a lot of trade routes is important. Um, additionally, it will provide plus one housing, plus one citizen slot that we just talked about, and plus one great admiral point per turn. It has a base cost of 120 production, and uh, if you want to buy it with gold, that will cost you 480 gold. So overall, for the lighthouse, I think that if you're going to settle a city directly on the coast, definitely go ahead and build a lighthouse in the city as well. The Tier 2 building for the Harbor District is known as the Shipyard, and it is unlocked with the Mass Production Technology. And the Shipyard will provide an additional plus 25% combat ex uh, experience for all naval units trained in the city, so once again, very good for naval domination. Um, and the Shipyard can be incredibly strong because of its other bonus, and that is that it provides bonus production equal to the adjacency bonus of the Harbor District. And a lot of the times, this can normally get you at least maybe two or four extra production, but uh, for with some sieves, it is absolutely broken. So Japan, for instance, that um, is able to get a lot of high adjacency, uh, like a high adjacency bonuses on its harbor districts, can get ridiculous amounts of production from the shipyard. If, if you're not sure how that works, feel free to check out the Let's Play that I have whenever I play Japan, because it is just very good. So if you have any harbor that has a very good adjacency bonus, I would definitely recommend building the shipyard. If you don't have particularly good adjacency bonuses though, and you're not planning on going for naval domination, I wouldn't really bother with the shipyard, I would just stop at the lighthouse. Um, the shipyard also does though provide plus one gold, plus one food, and plus one citizen slot, and the great admiral point as all of the district buildings do, so all of those are pretty okay, they're not really worth um, all of the production cost, of which is 290 production. Um, it should also be noted that this has a maintenance cost of 2 gold per turn, and where the lighthouse had no maintenance cost. Um, so overall, these bonuses alone I don't think are enough to uh, justify getting a shipyard, but if you do have good adjacency bonus, I would definitely go for shipyards, because the, you can get a good amount of extra production. Um, one thing I also should note is that if you have the policy card that doubles the adjacency bonus for all of your harbors, that will double the uh, bonus production that you get from shipyards as well. So that's something that's very easy to kind of exploit, depending on how how, uh, like how like what the map is looking like in the game and if you're able to get high adjacencies on your harbors so overall for the shipyard I would only recommend it if you have good adjacencies otherwise I would say just kind of disregard it the tier 3 building for the harbor district is known as the seaport and it is unlocked with the electricity technology the seaport will provide an additional plus 25% combat experience for all naval units trained in the city. I'm starting to notice a theme here. Um, but it will also allow you to construct fleets and armadas directly, so that means that you can just straight up go into the production queue, and there'll be the little drop-down menu, and you can select to train a fleet or armada directly. Let me bring back up the seaport here. Um, and additionally, you get uh, a 25% cost reduction on training fleets and armadas, which is definitely very nice. And you get plus two gold on all coast tiles for this city. So I think that that is a very strong bonus, especially if uh, you're, you've settled coastally and maybe you're going to have a lot of um, coast tiles that are in the borders of your city then this, this is really strong. If you have settled, like, uh, sorry, I'm going to try to keep the window up, but if you've settled like my city up here where there's not a lot of coast tiles within the actual borders of the city, then this is not that strong. But if you settled actually on the coast that you're going to have a lot of coast tiles, that plus two gold can add up very, very quickly. Uh, in addition to this, you will get plus two gold per turn, plus two food, plus one housing, and one more citizen slot, and of course that great admiral point that we are so used to now. Um, the uh, seaport also does have a production cost of 580 production, and I think you should probably aim to get at least one seaport in any game. I, if you're not going for naval domination, I don't think that you really need more than one seaport. If you have a city that could obviously make use of this plus two gold um, on all the coast tiles, then I think the seaport is probably worth it. But um, aside from that, I wouldn't build too many seaports just because they are pretty expensive. You have to get the shipyard first, and if you're not making use of the shipyard, then that's just kind of more wasted production. But um, I would at least recommend getting one seaport in any game just because the ability to train fleets and armadas directly is pretty strong, especially if you need to quickly react and, you know, do some naval defense because you, uh, since you can train them outright, that means you can purchase them with gold as well. So that ability is very nice for defense. So um, if you're not going for naval domination, I wouldn't really bother with the seaport too much. Um, and I would, I would still get at least one in your entire civilization, though. 
And the last thing that I want to talk about with the Harbor District is its district project. So the uh, the project for the Harbor is known as Harbor Shipping. And all that it does is it provides gold equal to 15% of the production that you invest into it. And I don't think that this is a very good district project. So for the most part, I would just straight up avoid it. Oh, it does provide great admiral points as well. But in general, I don't find great admirals to be all that useful unless you're going naval domination. So um, I would pretty much always avoid even bothering with the Harbor Shipping project. So thank you everyone for watching, I've been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, if not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.